listen, the struggle was not red. I experienced it, being deprived, being oppressed, even confused. It's enough now, we're taking the power back. We're stronger than before, we proud, proud are too strong. The worst is over, from K to Cairo. Welcome to the Azapo online webinar series. My name is Khaunti Balinodoba. I'm the publicity secretary of Azapo. I am playing host today, Sunday, the 20th of March, 2022. I'm playing host to two comrades that uh, are uh, people who've got the know-how in terms of the topic that uh, we are going to deal with today. And uh, the topic that we are dealing with today is food sovereignty and the struggles of black farmers in South Africa, Azania. Let me hasten to say that uh, this is a very interesting topic, topical. Uh, we see today that uh, in South Africa government and other uh, community development practitioners in agriculture and land affairs tend to talk about food security. But in our Zappo, we feel that we need to tackle the less talked about issue, which is food sovereignty as opposed to food security. Our panelists are going to talk us through what their thoughts are specifically on food sovereignty as opposed or in relation to uh, food security. We will now then get what the reactions of the audience will be. Now let me introduce uh, to members of the audience. In Azania, South Africa, the diaspora in the world who are watching us and who have joined us, welcome. Uh, I've got uh, the first to go will be the secretary for agriculture and land affairs in Azapo, uh, comrade uh, Tamaha uh, Malapani, who is a standing committee member of Azapo, elected uh, on the 4th of December, 2021, uh, to lead a very important department in Azapo, because Azapo speaks about land repossession. So it's very important that we've got this portfolio. It's a very important portfolio that he has. So he's going to share with us his views, what he thinks, and probably what his portfolio is thinking about in dealing with this matter of food sovereignty as against food security. Then I've got uh, one of uh, the people that do not need any introduction in struggle terms, if one should put it that way. That is uh, Dr. Reverend uh, Mamabolo Rapesu, who is a, a farmer. And we felt that we need to get the voice of a farmer because the topic speaks about food sovereignty and the struggles of black farmers in Azania, South Africa. So Dr. Mamabolo Rapesu is a practicing farmer, but as you can see the background uh, to his uh, image there on Zoom, he is also a practicing pastor, but I will not get into much details in those because both of them are very modest and they would not like one to get into them, but uh, comrade Ntate, uh, uh, Dr. Rapesu, uh, is not new to black consciousness. So colleagues and comrades, uh, welcome to Azapo Online. If, if we may start with you, uh, comrade uh, Malapani, would you share with us what your views are on the topic, food security and the struggles of black farmers in South Africa? I know you wanted to share your slides, so you can, you can go ahead and share your slides. You are on mute. You are on mute, comrade. Right. Maybe I should speak directly into, into the device. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, comrade. Brilliant. 
Thank you very much once again, Chairperson. And I must say that I feel privileged to join you through this uh, very important platform. Uh, you might take it for granted, but for many of us, this platform has really meant that we are able to engage to people who we have always thought they are far away from us in the presidents of, of, of Azapo and also get to know more about the position of, of Azapo on a number of topics. And I must say that we, we need to have this Azapo online platform going if we are to attract even more younger people. So Chairperson, I've prepared a couple of slides here just on the topic that we, we are entertaining today. If you may allow me, I'm going to go straight in, into the presentation. You may have to confirm on your side if you're able to see what I've projected here. Yeah, no, I can see, I can see, comrade. <clears throat> so Chairperson, as you have introduced me, my name is Malapani uh, Tamara. I am heading the Secretariat of Agriculture and Land. Uh, I do not just only speak about this topic. I'm a professional in, in this area. I've studied agriculture economics. So this is my day-to-day -day issue. So if we are to entertain the topic in question here, this is the outline that I, I have for prepared for purposes of, of our today's engagement. I'll just take you through the introduction and the background around food serenity and, and versus you know, food security, as you have just said, as well as you know, the state of agriculture in SA against the issue of food sovereignty, and then the struggles of, of black farmers in the country. And we look as well at the possible solutions to these challenges, and then we, we conclude and move to the questions and answers. So as a start chairperson, we, we are meeting today um, and we are meeting today when the world, you know, South Africa, Africa and the world over are experiencing two major disruptions uh, in the form of COVID-19, as well as the Ukraine and Russia war. Uh, I'm mentioning this because they speak to the topic in question in a sense that they have exposed how vulnerable our food systems are. In the case of COVID-19, we have seen in the 2020 when it hits that uh, uh, logistical challenges were, were experiences. The issue around uh, vulnerability of our, our food systems were exposed in a sense that uh, the hawkers for some reason were uh, prohibited from, from trading. And for some reason, the Jobek fresh produce market and Tony uh, tended to have some problems in terms of the purchasing of the, of the, of the produce from those, from those areas. And we've seen also, the increases in prices of food and loss of jobs. The same applies now in the Ukraine and Russian war uh, through the sanctions imposed by the NATO related countries and also our trade relation because now we are more of a globalized uh, space. And as a result, whatever that is experienced by Ukraine is experienced by Russia, we, it also hits us here. But let's look at South Africa they say in relation to these two countries. So South Africa does not have really strong uh, trade relations with these two countries. Uh, we mainly import wheat, sunflower and fertilizer. And they constitute about 2.6% in total uh, of the imports that we, we take from other countries. But uh, globally, uh, Russia and U Ukraine combined, they, they contribute about 30% of wheat, 14% of maize, barley, 32%, sunflower, same, 32%, and fertilizer, 14%. And the question will be, what will this mean, uh, the sanctions, this war in Russia and Ukraine for us here? And it speaks exactly to the topic in question. So we also export uh, some citrus, apples, pears, and table grapes to, to these two countries. So as a result, we are unlikely to be able to do so now that we're going to start with the citrus export. And the question will be, where are we going to take our citrus to? So Chair, uh, I mentioned those so that we, we see how topical the issue is, and we see how relevant it is to what we are experiencing today. But if we were to go into the fundamentals and ask what is food security and how do you differentiate it from food sovereignty? So in the case of food security, the emphasis is more about availability of food at all times, 
It has to be sufficient, safe, and nutritious. And it concerns itself less about the source of where or the food is produced. Whereas in the case of food sovereignty, it's more about communities taking power to democratically manage productive food system resources. In the case of land, managing land, managing their own feed, I mean, managing their own seeds, as well as water, including engaging in the trade in the way that they want to. Uh, whereas food security only speaks about availability. So here it's more the food sovereignty, it's more about how, how self-reliant a country would be. So it's sort of a precondition to a genuine food security if you put it that, that way. So these are the, the highlights when it comes to food sovereignty. Who produces the food? It's very important. Who controls the food market? It's very important. Where is food produced and where is it consumed? as well as who gets to benefit along the, 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 the food system. And we must also take into consideration the, the, the environment as we do so. So, so um, if you look at food sovereignty and you compare it to how things have been. So the trend now has, has been towards corporatization, meaning getting bigger and bigger. Uh, you've seen few big firms that are vertically integrating, that are horizontally integrating. You know, if you are, you are new in the business and you're trying to emerge, they buy you out or they just drop their prices, all of a sudden you're out of the system. And as a result, they've been, you know, promoted as a way to go when it comes to uh, food system in a sense that they get to be food efficient, I mean, efficient in terms of costs as well as delivery of, of food. But there's a trend lately that, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> that's a promotion of um, <coughs> consumption of locally produced food. Because one, they assist in the terms of, you know, health challenges that we face. Uh, we've seen that where uh, countries are experiencing high ob obesity challenges, as well as cro chronic diseases. And with this big corporations, they tend to use uh, intensive pesticide use, um, which are not so good for, 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 for our health. However, in the case of food serenity, you get to do away with dumping of, you know, lately there have been dumping of chickens in our country. And this is as a result of, of, of these big firms that are, are, are somehow sabotaging the production of, of, of poultry in this case for, by, by local producers. So, so, <clears throat> If you, you, you look at South Africa, South Africa is practicing more of a free market system. And the question will be, can you experience uh, food sovereignty in a, in a capitalist state? And, and, and like I've just mentioned now that uh, free market system promote, you know, uh, it says we are all equal as we go into the market. Uh, and also that uh, uh, f uh, consumers are, are free to choose what they want to consume. And that free to, to choose, I always put it in, in quotation marks, in a sense that if you go into a retail market and you want to purchase a spinach, for instance, you are likely to be driven by the price more than anything. So if in a capital state where big corporations are likely to produce big quantities and reduce the prices to a point where local consumers, I mean, local producers are unable to compete with them, then it becomes a challenge for, for even local consumers to support the small farmer. Because when you look at the prices, the price of a corporate is far lower than the price of, of, of a local farmer. So, so in such systems, you are likely, if anything, to remain with this few big firms dominating the market. And the challenge with the free market system is that it makes assumptions that you know, there's no monopoly, that um, the market is perfectly competitive and, and, and also that there are no market failures. But we have seen that even with this high efficient big firms, there are still challenges regarding you know, um, hunger and, and things like that. Now let's look at the state of quickly uh, agriculture in, 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 in South Africa. So if, if you look at what I have here on the right, it shows you in terms of output, what black farmers are, are, um, are contributing into the production of all this product that I've listed here. 
In the case of maize, which is a staple food, black farmers are contributing about 4.7%, meaning that the most part of or the junk part of that is, is it's being produced by white, white farmers. Soybeans is the same, is the same for all other this product except for cattle, <coughs> which at least uh, black farmers are contributing about 34%. But also there, if you look in the value chain, you hardly see black participants in the abattoir, in the processing of the meat, uh, it's a challenge. And therefore the question becomes, if the picture is like this, and food sovereignty, it says self-reliance, it says more producers, promotion of smallholder farmers, promotion of more participants in the, in the production of our, our, our food. What does this picture say? So from a food sovereignty point of view, it's safe to say we are not a food sovereign country. But from a food security point of view, we are food secure to a point that we are able to even export uh, some of the product that we, we, we produce. I thought I should just also add um, some information around you know, who our, uh, our bigger trading partners. But more importantly, if you look at the bottom, there are about 32,000 commercial farmers in the country. We are a country of 60 million people. Only 32,000 commercial farmers are responsible for more than 90% of our food. These are white farmers. We've got about 22 million smallholder farmers and are responsible for the figures that I just mentioned. And of the 32,000 commercial farmers that are existing, only 5,000 to 7,000 farmers are responsible for 80% of our agriculture output. The question then remains, are we comfortable with that? Do we think that is the way to go? If uh, our vision is perhaps to change that state, what is our, in our mind, our vision around what we want to get to? So Chairperson, I've also, you know, thought I should share with you the slide that speaks to the struggles that uh, black farmers are facing in the country. And in most cases, we tend to just focus on the land issue. Yes, it is a very important issue. But for those who have benefited, for instance, from land reform, who have access to land, whether through LRAT, SLEG, or the latest uh, model of PLUS, they will tell you that once they, they have you know, acquired access to land, whether it's a lease or ownership, then the, the questions of water rights arise. So the issue of water rights is as important as the issue of land, in a sense that if you have land and you do not have water rights, you are unlikely to, to produce. The same applies to the issue of being able to, the skills that applies to a farmer to produce, not only produce consistently, a uh, product of quality, as well of quantity that is required by the market. Uh, Chairperson, unfortunately, if you go to your nearby retail stores, which are dominating or whoever that uh, procures produce from farmers and you want to supply them, they are, they are likely to give you bigger quantities for you to supply. And majority of our farmers are unlikely to do so. And as a result, they continue to be sidelined. That speaks to the market issue. <coughs> so chairperson, in addition to land issues, water rights, and technical production, as well as market access, it's an issue of certification. So there are those <clears throat> these things that they're called the gap certification. You're either global gap certified or local gap certified. If you're not, you're unlikely to supply to this bigger retail store. And if you speak around that food sovereignty issue, it says then you are not in control of your food system as a farmer. You are limited. So it's a sort of a cash 22 situation. And also the issue of uh, access to finance. I get so many calls. Every second farmer that phones me, they, it's either they are looking for, for funding, I mean grant, or they're looking for a loan. And unfortunately, we do not have adequate finance to, to institution to support farmers in this regard. But if you were to compare and contrast with our apartheid government, that's a book that is published by the, the land bank chairperson that speaks to the hundred years of the, the existence of, of the land bank. You read through that book, you realize that actually it was not by coincidence that 
the figures that I've mentioned with regard to commercial farmers, they are where they are and how competitive we are as a country uh, or as white farmers, it, it was not by mistake that we got into where we are. It's through support after support uh, that white farmers got into where they are to get today. Uh, as if the above are not enough, we're facing the issue of, of climate change. Uh, now our weather uh, is so unpredictable, it tends to be short and there tend to be more frequent, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> struck of, 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 of drought, uh, more frequency of, of floods, as well as hail. So these challenges, they add to already existing challenges for, for black farmers. Mind you, the insurances tend to be expensive. So if you put in your 50,000 rand in the land, expecting that you will have it later on, and only to be hit by, say, Flats, it means that that little money that you had is gone. <coughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Chairperson, I had prepared some few slides that are, I guess, you know, I'll be happy to entertain them. And I've just touched on them as, as we were talking now here on the land issue around the field, you know, willing buyer, willing seller, and the proposed solution that, as a example, we believe that the <clears throat> The, the, free, the, the, the market system of land reform is really not working for us because of the price inflation of prices as well that how this land was acquired if you look back in, in, in history. So, so our position is that the land has to be in, held you know, on behalf of farmers in the hands of uh, in, in, in the state. And if anything, those who want to work the land be given some leases um, to can work the land but at the same time, there has to be some form of ceiling. You know, it cannot be that one corporation owns vast amount of land, uh, they own mountains, they own even dams, uh, and it's just one individual. So there has to be some sort of ceiling to say you can only own up to, so if indeed the issue of food sovereignty is important to us. So we have spoken about the water rights that they need to be transformed and the issue of quality produce, the issue of market access. The only point that I want to emphasize here, uh, Chairperson, is that uh, the government have feeding scheme, they've got hospitals, they've got your defense force, the prisons that require food daily. But for some reason and due to the tendering system, black farmers are unable to tap into those markets. So I want to propose here that we look back into history and say, what can we steal from, you know, or what can we copy? There used to be what they call single market system prior to 1994. And this market system meant that farmers do not have to worry about market. All they have to do is to focus on production and the market is catered for. Perhaps government could look into that, especially for black farmers and say, if you are a black farmer, here's a platform, all you have to do is produce and you are guaranteed a market. I can tell you uh, the figures you saw in the previous slides will change overnight. <clears throat> the issue of access to finance we've spoken about and the issue of climate change we, we, we have spoken about. In conclusion, Chairperson, we're saying that we have to emphasize that you know, the idea around the land reposition has to gain center stage. It's not, it's not even discussed. I think it has to gain center stage and it's us who can, can make sure that that is happening. Um, secondly, that we need a holistic approach to the challenges that are facing farmers, black farmers in particular, in a sense that if you say you solve the access to land issue, you still have water rights, you still have market access, you still have finance. So we need a comprehensive and holistic approach to, to these challenges if indeed the issue of food sovereignty, it's, it's very important to us. But most importantly, we need to take advantage of our numbers as black people were in majority in this country. Uh, we have to, the power to control what to consume and, and as well as from who to consume that from. And I think that we, we are not really tapping into and more importantly, there has to be more investment into our state-owned entity 
Chairperson, lately there have been less and less investment into your Agriculture Research Council, your Land Bank, your PPACB, OBP, and National Agriculture Marketing Council. And these are very important institutions that can see to it that Black farmers that are struggling are really catered for. If anything, for all the state-owned entities you see here, there's always a parallel institution in the private sector that is doing the same thing. So seemingly the death of the state-owned entities favors you know, the private sector, which is dominated by, by those who can afford with bigger, bigger land. And I think that needs to be emphasized even more. Uh, <clears throat> second, lastly, there has to be with our extension services. I guess Natera Pesu will speak more to this as a farmer, the experience that they're having with our extension officers that in most cases, <coughs> um, you'll find that our extension officers are lacking in a sense that they are not specialists. They have to deal with everything at the same time. So it's difficult. I think we need, if anything, we need to second them to our commodity group so that they are specialists. If you're a grain farmer or you're a grain extension officer, you specialize only in grain. You know about grain from when the seed is buried in the soil to when the harvest takes place to the value chain as well. So, so, so Chairperson, um, as I conclude, I want to also share something that one is involved in, which speaks to the policy of Azapo of self-reliance that uh, black farmers uh, have came together in their own rights to say, it cannot be that we continue to operate like this without any financial support. If we go to the banks, we're always told about collateral, we're, we're told about the things that we don't have. So how about we set up our own uh, cooperative bank? So we are in a process of setting up our cooperative bank, but SE is operating in a form of an agri-stock firm. So if you are in, for someone who's listening now and they're interested, all you have to do is to look for five more people who are interested to be in this. It operates like a stock firm. There are five of you, I mean, there are six of you. The purpose mainly is to purchase of exclusively input from members of the agri, agri stock firm. So if you are within our agri stock firm and you want to purchase your, your input, uh, you have to look for someone within the network that supplies the very same product that you, you're looking for. It's only then that you can look outside if you don't find them here. But what is important is that from the contribution that these members will be making, uh, about 20% of that goes into the investment towards establishing our own cooperative bank. So the advantage around this is that we also have a cooperative chamber where we take advantage of the expertise that we have. So in the grain for each commodity, say grain, tomato, poultry, rabbits, we have you know, well-vested uh, technical people who can assist if you are interested to venture into those uh, areas. So if you're a new entrant, you are, you are well you know, assured that at least you will have some sort of, of, of support. Uh, the last part is the requirement. So for that cooperative bank to get started, there's a need for about 200 members of which uh, seemingly we are getting there by the end of the year, there'll be a quite a nice announcement around that. And I thought I should share this so that an ordinary farmer listening to this session that speaks to policy, which tend to be long-term, you know, by nature, because what you speak about, we've been speaking about expropriation of, of land without compensation for quite some time now. We are yet to see the fruit of that. But if you stop or after this session, you are able to say, perhaps it's about time that, you know, I take charge of my own destiny and I become part of something that speaks to the policies of, of Azapo in the form of agri stock fell network. Just to speak to this point, as here, yeah, there are different categories from which uh, those who may want to join may look into the silver, the gold, platinum, and platinum plus category. In the silver, the contributions are around 300 uh, rand monthly amongst yourself. So if it's your 10 on that month, you're likely to get 3,600. Or if you went for the 500 category, you join the, you get the 6,000 one. So the, the, the silver category, we relaxed it a bit that it can be six up to 12. And if you multiply 12 by three, 300 and 12 by 500 gives you those figures. 
well, the rest is, is self-explanatory. And I guess from here, Chairperson, um, I can uh, thank you and, and, and we'll engage you know, the audience from the floor. Thank you, Comrade uh, uh, Malapani uh, Tomaha. Uh, that was uh, that was a lot of information to chew. So, uh, for now, you can maybe uh, 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 unshare your your slides so that we we can now then get to. We have noted some of the points, and I hope members of the audience have also done that. And I'm sure we'll start getting some of the questions streaming in, and also on Facebook. Uh, Facebook Live, Azapo Facebook. Uh, we we hope that uh, uh, people have, are chewing the card of what you shared with us. So we are going to hand over to uh, Comrade Doctor Ntatem Ruti Mamabolo Rapesu to share with us his perspectives on this particular uh, topic of the day: the food sovereignty and the struggles of black farmers in South Africa, Zania. So me and Ntate Malapani, we will just mute uh, also our video so that we hand over to uh, Dr. Uh, Rapes. Over to you, Ntate Mrut. Uh, you are on mute. You are on mute, Dr. Rapesu. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Yes, you are in business now. Ah, good. Um, I think that, thank you uh, for having invited me to participate in this exercise. It's, it's a very rare thing to see political parties involving themselves in this area of life. Uh, simply because delivering service to farmers hinges around the efficient, efficiency of the government service, where politics political heads are involved and where even administrative heads who happen to be uh, members of parties. And it is for that reason that uh, perhaps it makes it them, it difficult for them to participate in, 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 in issues and problems uh, surrounding the family life. I can say quite a number of things, but that, that could be said. Most have been said by, by, by Tamara. Uh, there is uh, the whole thing about saying black people own farms. And unless there's one who by accident happened to have money or someone died and left a very big estate for him, or for her to buy land with his money. Land is very expensive. Uh, you can buy it with your own money unless uh, you are given time uh, to reach a certain level in your family, well supported to enable you to, to pay. But uh, over and above that, land is not owned by black people in this country. And I wonder why, unless political parties announce it very clearly what they mean by state owning land. Because white people have got title deeds and uh, we don't have title deeds. We own the state lands. We are, we are beneficiaries of the state's programs. We just use the land and they need money also. They are sometimes threatening us. But what what is, is even when there is that budget that they asked to use for supporting the farmers. Nothing is being done to support the black farmers. I've, I've, I've just been at the, the Houtim Department of Agriculture last week and telling them that give us human faces because you have destroyed our lives. You have destroyed our humanity. You have not gone as far as recognizing that we are human beings. And, and yet it is of course, even if they can do something, but the, the nature, the setting, the how the buildup of this government is not for supporting black people. 
And it cannot go to that length. It will do it minimally. Because money, they, they don't even have the, the necessary money to can support because they themselves also want to be supported. They are themselves taking the money to themselves. So much of the budget is being taken by officials, is being taken by politicians. That money that is to go to farming uh, to help uh, ailing farmers like black farmers. And, and well, black farmers don't have land. Uh, uh, let, let me say it, repeat it and say it repetitively. Most of us have been more than 15 years on the government farm. And when we came in, we are told that at some stage we'll be given a title this and have ownership. Well, there was a demand for black farmers and we are used as, 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 as we're used by, the, by these guys to, uh, as, as uh, uh, what, what should I say in this in this regard? We were used as 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 guinea pigs by the government to to take the land that they bought with so many millions from white people and handed it over to us and said, "This is your land. Upon if you can stay here for more than five years." then the title deed will be issued to you. But even before the end of five years, they come with a new contract speaking a different language altogether. I mean, as things are, most of us who have been on, on the farmland uh, owned by, by, by the government have been uh, have more than one, three contracts issued to us with different uh, messages or a different vocabulary. So we are, we, are, we are in a very serious fix. And if ever any political party talks the language of, of farming, it has to take the land. And if it has to take the black people, it must take the entire land regime from whoever owns it because we can't allow a situation where black people don't have title deeds, white people have title deeds, out of the land that most of them, well, I accept the fact that some bought the land, but some of the land was stolen. Some of the land, was, they, they, I mean, like, like in the area around Marble Hall, white people there have been given land by their white government years ago. And unfortunately, that government didn't issue our title deeds. And when these guys began to see the threat that is coming because they don't have title deeds, they handed all, all that land to, to the provincial governments of, 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 of South Africa, the present provincial land affairs of, of, of South Africa. So we, we have a situation where we cannot proudly say we, we are farmers. We are, we are just uh, sentinels. You know, we are holding the fort for the government's property. And you can't be proud of, of, of not having a farm, uh, I mean, a title deed and ownership. That, that, that even, even if you are a socialist, there should be certain portions that are given to those who want to own the land and the, the, the and land that has to go to, to, to those who want just simply to, pro, to, to, to pro, produce their food. But uh, for, for any commercial farmer, for a black person to become a commercial farmer, you must own the land because it gives you the muscle as a person who owns property, and you can get a collateral, you can do business with other business institutions and loan on that, on your collateral. And that's what white people, white farmers, commercial farmers are doing. They have proper collateral. And there is no bank that really looks well at black people. There is no land bank as the land bank that was supporting the white people. We don't have the land bank that supports us. That land bank 
In the first incident, they took the money, the officials ate the money. And later on, of course, and I mean, earlier, earlier on that bank has been continued to support whites because whites will pay them back quickly. So there isn't any institution that is all out for farmers, black farmers. And therefore the whole thing of food regime, my understanding of food sovereignty uh, is that you are saying uh, a situation where there is, there is unlimited production of, of food by, by, by us, but food, food production that holds this country going and people of this country comes from white people because they have land and they use the land, they work on the land and black people don't, don't have money to work on the land maximally. So we, you, you have that problem, but the government has destroyed also black people, has disappointed them because of the corruption that is taking the little budget that is there, that is supposed to reach and help the farmers who can produce food for this country. And the sooner a method to remove this government comes in place, the better for farmers. So uh, yes, we, we have got people, I mean, most people talk about skills. Most of us who came, who have got more than 10 years in, this, in, in, in farming are highly skilled in food products, but you don't have the necessary tools, including uh, money. In other words, this government has not leveled the playing field for its own people. It might have done so for individuals, but not for people of this country. So you must know that we are dealing with a government that is foreign to us in terms of being our government, in terms of responding to you know, the, the kind of needs, the, the leveling the playing fields for, for farmers. There isn't that kind. Of, and over and above that, we are unprotected as, as, as farmers. This, this doesn't only include us as black farmers. There is high crime. It takes place on broad daylight every, almost every week in, in this area, in this province of Audi. There has to be crime where farmers' properties are stolen, including animals, all this killing their dogs so that they can access uh, whatever they want. And of course, in some incidents, it happens that they even kill the farmers. So that makes farming even more dangerous. But uh, uh, there is uh, private organizations. Uh, we are part of the private organizations that protect the farmers. We go all out, but we don't get a, a compliment from the, far, uh, the, the government in terms of having some of the police, even if it's soldiers deployed in the farming areas. So there, there are quite a, a number of things that really, um, and of course, uh, Comrade um, Malabani has spoken about uh, what is happening now in the country and elsewhere in the world and how it affects uh, the production and especially in the area of fertilizer and diesel, because in this in that area where war is taking place, uh, both the areas those areas are suppliers either of raw material for the production of fertilizer, or even fertilizer itself. They also have to do, they also have to do with the production of oil, diesel. Most of us in farming, the smallest farmer spends over 7,000 liters during the farming season, farming season. So I, I, I would like to, more to debate than to talk about the life as a farmer, it makes me frustrated. 
it, 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 is, it is so embarrassing. It's embarrassing that you find even black people really doing down their own people. Where, I mean, the public service that we have should be the best public service for us to help. In, 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 in really, especially when thinking in, in terms of, of what the kind of work we do for the country. But uh, it's, it's actually the departments of agriculture are provincially, they are conduits of all forms of corruption because there is a way that you've got the clientele, you can even corrupt a farmer and, and, and take the government's money to, and give it to one farmer who you and him or her uh, are going to have shares in the long run. But there is, this is, this. I'm not just uh, making a hypothesis. I'm talking about a real situation of farmers that I have seen, that we even protested against. Right now, when, when Malabani threw up the whole thing of marching, everybody buys into it because it will make a serious impact on the government. The government has divided farmers as well. They made sure that they, they have their own guys who they can help in a small way anyway, and, and have those that they say are, they look at as rebels and, and sort of being political in a way. And, and those are isolated and imagine they are people of the government in farming, people, whether they are party members or just friends, but those are the distributors of the spoils in the farming world. I, I think in a nutshell, I've, I've given you roughly, is, unless you have questions, I, I will be more ready for questions that you need. Um, in a nutshell, this is a situation that black farmers are faced with. And I'm, I'm happy that you, you begin to address this, not just for political gains, because I, 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 I'm, we, some of us are tired of populism in politics. And we want to see real action and honest service to, to our communities rather than a kind of populism where people make certain statements that they cannot even pursue practically. So I think uh, this brings my, my, my talk to, to the end, but uh, I, I would be more comfortable with questions than talks. All right. No, well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Mamabulo Rapesu and also Comrade Malapane Tamaha uh, for, your, for your thought provoking inputs. Uh, uh, we will invite Comrade Malapana, Malapane uh, Tamaha back uh, with his video so that now we can have a conversation. Uh, let us start with you, Dr. Rapes. You have just said you are more comfortable in dealing with questions uh, than giving us further input. You talk about an issue of uh, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, that as Comrade Malapan has also hinted that uh, because of the sanctions now, we might not be able to export nor might we not be able to import from them. And you speak about uh, the raw materials, the diesel that you need, which is oil. And for an average small farmer during the farming season, you need something like 7,000 liters right, of diesel to operate. But now it's difficult for you to be able to uh, do that given the situation that there is. So one of the solutions that you are suggesting both you and comrade Malapan is uh, let us march, let us protest against government. But now the question that I have when I said, yes, yeah, but these farmers, if I was a member of, of, of government, the government, I said, but these guys are ungrateful. Uh, through our land reform processes, we've just given them farms. And some of them have been in this farm for six, seven years and they are earning a living and empowering others. So why would they, they want to go into an insurrection? Here is Malapani, we have given him skills 
through the education system. Now we can analyze, he works with us in the agribusiness, and now they all of us are going to say there must be an insurrection against us as government. How would, you, how would you respond to that query? That you are ungrateful. If anything, you should be saying this government is doing the right well, thing to empower the farmers, particularly the black farmers. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, yes, there, there, there is a need for insurrection. Let me say so. A serious one for them. Even if it means a coup, but a coup by, by the right people, so as to take the resources, direct the resources to where they should make mm. an impact. Mm. There is a need, a need for that. Mm. And, and, and I, 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 I don't care. I, I'm not being given the, it's not a favor. I'm favoring the count. I'm doing a favor to this count. Than, than being seen as being done a favor by them. I'm contributing to us food security in this country. And I feel in every country where farmers are given a sizable subsidy as, 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 input, as inputs for their farming every year. I mean, in Canada, for instance, they give, 50% of the GDP in Canada. And in other countries, they are giving them, although it may not equal to a big percentage, but they are supporting farmers. In this country, they still for, for, for the resources, I mean, the inputs that are supposed to be channeled to farmers. So we don't, roughly one has come to a point where one say, we don't have a country that can do things for the good of our people. OK. OK, no, thank you, Dr. Rapes. We'll come back to you. We need an insurrection by the right people. Uh, we'll get to that later on. Uh, Comrade Manapan, your, your, your reactions to what we have, we, have, we have posted and also what Dr. Rapes is saying. Black farmers uh, are, are ungrateful. No, th thanks, Chairperson. I think. You know, if anything, um, uh, government shouldn't make any promises if they are not to fulfill those promises. The challenge becomes when you have to match the promises against the delivery. And, and, and this is made worse because then those who have to hold the government, you know, accountable, they find themselves very divided. If you look in the farming space, in terms of the number of farm organizations that exist that are supposed to be the voice and lobby and advocate on behalf of black farmers. It's either there are many and their voices are just disjointed, or if there's one united uh, organization, it tend to be some sort of an agricultural wing of a ruling party. Hmm. I will have a problem uh, if come a day when Azapo is in charge, and it's a farm organization which is in the same bed with, with Azapo, which means then Azapo wouldn't be able to deliver. Or if it doesn't deliver, then uh, they will be easily talked to and say, no, guys, uh, keep quiet, because you know we, we are comrades here. Mm -hmm. So if we can you know, be principled and allow uh, Black consciousness to take over in our mind and say, this is what we want, not only for us. You know, some of the challenges that farmers experience is that they elect the leaders, but when the leaders have to represent them, the first thing that they want is to be the first in the queue so that they are shut and they cannot speak anymore. So, so with the programs that government have so many programs that are in place, and if you look at the audits, if you look at the annual reports by different government institutions, you are likely to see a different picture from the picture that is painted by, by farmers themselves. So one, as uh, I saw comrade uh, uh, Nona here has contributed that we need, like we are doing with PSC, we need a united front of black farmers who are going to say in as much as we differ in terms of who is the leader or the direction we must follow, but we have a common interest. And one of such common interests is the issue of land, the issue of access to finance, 
as I've mentioned earlier, on access to market, you know, uh, again and again, they hate so much about certification. In the latest sauna, you have seen the president speaking about uh, cannabis. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you now that the cannabis issue, it's likely already uh, the white guys are far ahead of the black, black, black farmers in the cannabis space. If anything, black farmers are likely to be uh, given an opportunity to produce hemp, of which is not really where the money is, because the money is in the cannabis space. And there, the issues of licenses come in, they are expensive, and they take longer for you to acquire. So those are some of the issues that you know, farmers face. And unfortunately, if we are not speaking in one voice, if we are not holding each other accountable, we are unlikely to get it right. So there has to be a structural way to address this issue. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, uh, in this discussion of ours, we, we, we got to hear about how we put side by side the two concepts, uh, food security as opposed to food sovereignty. And I think both of you as panelists agree that South Africa is not a food sovereign country. No, no. But at the same time, if we say so, we say food so sovereignty speaks to, for lack of a better expression, you are the experts, you will correct me, speaks to uh, unlimited, I'm using this guardedly, unlimited food production. Mm not just necessarily unlimited in, in the sense that you are then able to sustain. Them. So that's basically what you're saying. But now if there is a case, Dr. Rapes, we have just said that the whites are the ones that are doing that because they own the land, they've got the finances, uh, they come from a legacy from generation to generation. We know that they are thieves, they're land thieves. So they are beneficiaries of this land, land uh, thieving. Mm -hmm. So are they not involved in food sovereignty? They also are the majority owners of the land in this country. So now, whether we agree or not, I put it to both of you. South yeah. Africa is a food, is a sovereign, a food sovereign country led by whites, not by black sure. people. Should a country yes. only be food sovereign when it's led by, by the majority of inhabitants? All right. I'm throwing this to you controversially so that I hear yeah. how you'll respond. I will say this country is, uh, is, is a food sovereign country led by white farmers and white people. What will your responses be, Dr. Rapesu? I, I agree with you. Uh, that I mean, I mean, you look at export, for instance. Ex the kind of export that comes comes from the rich white people uh, in, in the wine industry, in, in the fruit industry. You know, all, 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 all the, and of course, even the, the, the food that we are talking about, I, I happen to have been in a committee that does the counting of, of maize production by Adam. Indeed, I heard last night the Minister Disa talking about say, that the, the, the fact that the people, our people are safe food wise, they are safe, they are on the safe side. Every, the, what is happening in the Soviet and uh, um, Ukraine is not going to have any impact on South Africa. That was the assurance because already the harvest of the coming months has been counted. They know how much it, it is going to be. And uh, as, 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 as Tama has said earlier on, that uh, uh, there is a small percentage of contribution in terms of things like maize. We are contributing that percentage because definitely not all the land that is in the hands of black people is being maximally used. Even before we talk about land that needs to be given, it's not being maximally used because there aren't the tools, necessary tools to work on the land. I mean, harvesting a land or, or 
uh, or buying a harvester which will cost a new harvester will cost, cost you three million just okay. one harvester and you use it once a season and that's it so farming implements are very expensive and the the black farms farmers have been left when when they 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 they, they were allocated the land by the government they were left without equipment to mm. continue with the farm. From there, unless you have been fortunate and maybe you are coming from a work situation, you use part of your previous any elsewhere into farming and invest. And that's a re- very serious problem because your pension could have gone into the, the sea, thrown into the sea. Okay, so, okay. No, 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 we hear you. No, hear I, you. I, 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 I agree with you about okay. the, so, the, the food for sovereignty, but, but when you talk to me about food sovereignty, it doesn't affect me because it's elsewhere within South Africa. It's part <laughs> no, of I hear you. No, I hear you. Let <laughs> me bring in Comrade uh, Malapani here, who is, who, is very, who is shaking his head all the time as, as, as I spoke. Yes, yes, Comrade, let us hear <laughs> you. Comrade, uh, yes, Chairman, yes, I'm, 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 I'm shaking my head because seemingly you're confusing food sovereignty with food security. Okay. Uh, Because food security is more about availability of food irrespective of where you're sourcing it from. Okay. So so we are food secured as a country to a point that we export even the surplus to other countries. But when it comes to sovereignty, it's more about the control of productive food system resources. Uh, but but, but Kumar Malapani, a, a, a white, a white is the white establishment, what others call white monopoly capital. Are they not doing exactly what you are saying food sovereignty does? They own the land, the means of production. They have got the financial wherewithal. They do all these kinds of things that you're talking about. Oh, yes. So surely, right. so surely there is within the ambit yeah. of food sovereignty. Yeah. So chairperson, yeah. clearly, clearly you, you have missed uh, one aspect of my, my definition here. Okay. which speaks about communities in control of productive uh, food system resources. And when we say communities, we are not saying some communities. So in this case, it's some communities which are white people, whereas okay. we are in the majority. So okay. here it says communities. We go to Harankua and you find the community of Harankua being in charge, being in control of the productive Food management systems, and which which include the land, water, your seed, and if you look at the slide that I presented about a, a water right, yeah. you see that still ninety percent of the water right is in the hands of white people. So so we are obsessed about land reform or land being in the ownership of white people, but still yeah. water is an issue. If you go to any water related conferences. It's always lily white, as if we are not interested in water issues. Because okay. I guess only until you get to access land, you realize, oh, I need an irrigation scheme. What is mm. the process? I need this and that. What is the process? Then you realize you don't have water rights. Okay. We, we, we held a session on this matter, uh, Chairperson, under the auspices of the Agricultural Transformation Focus. So I have a platform where I host regularly uh, issues related to agriculture every second Thursday, uh, policy issues, the burning issues around the matter. And if you listen to farmers who are operating under the catchment areas, and you listen to how the catchments, the, the water, the water boards are managing those catchment areas, you re- you think that you are in a different country altogether. Okay. And unfortunately, they are in minority. And when you are in minority, you do not have power. You're, you're always overruled in meetings, you know, whatever you say does not go. So, so those are the challenges. And another issue is the issue of seeds. Okay. Seeds are becoming a political issue, uh, Chairperson. Uh, I happen to be lucky as young as I am. I grew up in an area where, where you know, as subsistence as they were, but our, our mothers and grandparents were able to have their own seeds and mm. keep it in the way in which they have always kept it for generations after generations. And it's, it's very uh, disheartening uh, in a sense that 
that does not exist anymore because we have to go into the market whenever we have to, to plant. We do not have it in Sudirba before. We do not have Mabelo Toro that we always had. We always have, meaning someone is in charge of, and, and I'm going to tell you something very controversial, Chairperson. As a result, through the support of government, when Bon Datera Pesu are asking for farmer support and are given fertilizer and seeds, and in most cases, the seeds that they're given, the quality of the seed that they're given is questionable. Mm. It's questionable because they are not food sovereign. Okay. They are not in charge of these resources. Okay. So, so, so there's a need for a serious concerted effort around these issues, uh, uh, Chairperson. Okay. You know, thank you very much, Comrade Malapan. Thank you also for the clarification. Uh, food sovereignty is about the two. Uh, what another comrade, and I'm going to allow him to talk now, what Comrade Nafolo Vodder calls total involvement of the communities. So I think we have just clarified the matter and we are clear now. Uh, at the stage, uh, I've got, I had two hands that were up. I've got two hands that are up here. Uh, I've got Comrade Pandelani Nefolo Vodwe uh, and also Comrade Kekeleto Kena would want to speak. So I would allow Comrade uh, Nefolo Vodwe uh, to go first. And then thereafter, we will go to Comrade Kekeleto Kena and then you can then take uh, their, their, their issues both. Uh, let me try to give Comrade uh, Nefolo Vodwe a chance to speak. Uh, can you hear me? Over to you, Tawa. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Comrade Muhuri. Uh, let, let me first can thank you, the two, uh, President. Let me first thank the two comrades who are uh, the speakers. Um, and I must confess, I know them very well. Uh, <laughs> the other one, the other one is my older generation. Uh, I don't want to speak about what we have done together uh, uh, on this path. The younger generation also, I'm pleased to say I've associated uh, and I've learned as he has actually described the question of food sovereignty properly because it does not end only at the level of saying a certain section of our community is able to supply all of us with food. Okay. And it continues to do that. When that certain section of the community is in conflict with the majority of the people, food will not come. Okay. And you cannot have food sovereignty when that situation occurs. So here we are also dealing with the past. We are dealing with those people who have held these resources unto themselves, who are even afraid about others entering into the space because it is very prof profitable, absolutely profitable for them and their small community. So we cannot depend on that. And as a result, therefore, uh, as I always say, Food sovereignty really means total involvement of every sector of the population. So that if by any means, these ones who are hoarding uh, these resources happen to be hostile, because the whole community has got access uh, to productive activities, you won't have to worry about. It actually goes along with the independence of your country. It is far, far deeper, far, far deeper than just to say we are having food every day. So that, that is the only part I wanted uh, to enter into so that uh, we can have a, uh, I used to be involved in um, food security projects and I still, I am still involved in food security projects and uh, I'm happy with doing that. But I was aware of the fact that it can end there only because you have to secure uh, uh, your country's integrity in terms of the supply of food. Thank you very much, Comrade. 
No, thank you, Comrade Nafolo Vodwe. Uh, you speak about you are involved in food security. Doesn't that mean that food security is working for this country, uh, Comrade Nafolo Vodwe? Oh, he's, he's left us. Okay. Uh, the, when, when yes, yes, Tawa, you can go ahead, Comrade Neff. Yeah, I'm, I'm involved in this food security part because I'm aware of the fact that it is just one of the elements that can make our people to sustain themselves. In the meantime, whilst we are still busy wanting to overthrow the whole system, there's a system here which is actually a bottleneck. And that system has got to be overthrown. I've heard uh, uh, Dr. Rapesu talking about, uh, does he call it an insurrection or what? Yes, yeah, an insurrection. <laughs> yeah, he, he's really describing that there must be an overthrow okay. of, a, of the system we live under. Because you, we, will not be, we will not be able to resolve what we are debating by going piecemeal. Okay. okay this, no, what I'm doing is what you call trying to ameliorate. You know, this thing of saying, don't leave your people in poverty. And, uh, but don't, don't, don't be happy that you have uh, able to supply some food to your people. And you think that really the cornerstone of freeing people from hunger. Okay. No, no, thank you. Thank you, Comrade Nafolovo. Can we get to, before we go to Comrade Kenna, can I get a reaction from my panelists? Uh, Comrade uh, Dr. Rapesu and Comrade Malepani. Uh, Comrade Malepani will get to join us on video as well. Uh, just a reaction to the input by Comrade Nefolo Uh Yes, Comrade Rapesu, we can hear you. You can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Comrade Nefolovo is not far from the truth. It's not far from the truth. We, we need a way of dealing with the system, of eradicating and uprooting it. Get it out. If we don't apply that kind of measure, we'll still live with this for the rest. I mean, the system today is, is no more the system uh, as, as we used to see it in the form of apartheid days, in the in, in the form of apartheid, it, it's 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 serious. It's even more serious than the apartheid days because it's it it has absorbed few of our black people, and it's it's, it's no more racial capitalism. It's capitalism in in in, in and and that's a very cruel system. To be honest, because fin fin finally, when it doesn't work, people must be killed in order to to make space for it to work. So we we, we, we need to get rid of the system that is there from from where it is, and even its beneficiaries, they okay. they, they have to be be removed from our way. They must be removed from office. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Comrade Malapan. Uh, Chairperson, thanks. I, I just want to say that I agree wholly with what uh, Comrade uh, President has just said. I think it speaks to exactly what I was just saying now. But maybe just in addition that <clears throat> we, we become progressive in what we do, you know, uh, and it's also the case here. I, I just happen to always interact with retired people whenever we are in the space of agriculture. And if really we are taking the issue of food sovereignty quite serious, mm. uh, the issue of successive plan really is, is quite important. And I'm happy that in the case of Dr. Rapesu, the daughter in Guinea is taking over, but she shouldn't just take over on the farm. She must be part and parcel of engagements of this nature. I've learned so much in engagements of this nature. So I thought I should just highlight that before it's, it's, it slips my mind. Otherwise, I'm in, in agreement with what Comrade okay. President is saying. Okay, no, thank you. Let us go to Comrade Kekele Tsokena. But before I go there, Comrade Malepane and Comrade uh, Mama Bolora Pesu, I can tell you that Facebook is a buzz with comments and questions. 
the chat and the Q&A. So many questions, I'm going to come to them later. And uh, people are just saying, wow, what a wealth of information. They find this very educative. Let us allow Comrade Kekele, so Canada, the Deputy President of Azapo, uh, to make an input. Uh, Comrade Kekeleto, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Chairperson, for the opportunity to speak. I must appreciate uh, the two speakers who have um, really given us a wealth of information. I just really wanted to then ask a couple of questions and um, probe a little bit further. Um, I've got literally, I'm so sorry, but I have about three, questions, three to four questions that I want to ask. Um, one is, what is it that Azapo can do in terms of reversing the situation around food control. Um, and this we understand um, as a political risk. We know for a fact that uh, when, we, uh, when we march against Afri Forum or whenever there are issues that concern the Boers, um, you will find that their narrative is that we actually feed you you have no right to speak against us because we are the ones that provide you with food and therefore we should be given, you know, a carte blanche to do as we please. So there's an issue there that one day, should we decide to take over the land, um, we will then have issues around food security. Uh, what is Azapo's plan uh, in, in ensuring uh, that that does not happen? Secondly, what is Azapo's plan to deal with uh, DFIs, DFIs being public funding institutions that we know for in fact are very racist. We know for a fact that um, whenever DFIs go to, uh, uh, um, to the oversight committee in, in parliament, they provide states that kind of look as though black people are being funded, but we know for a fact that if you probe a little bit deeper into those statistics, uh, black people are not being funded, black people are not being supported. So what are we doing? to ensure that we can increase the funding and support of black people as an organization. Um, also, we understand that uh, farming is a critical, uh, has a criti is a critical uh, uh, area from which we can grow the, the economy. It is um, where we can actually grow the economic pie because if we can one, um, increase the number of black farmers, we also increase um, the employment numbers. Um, and by so doing, we introduce a number of people into the economy and as, as subsequently we then be able to yeah. open the pie and grow the, yeah. the economy. So what, how, what, are, we, what are we doing uh, to ensure uh, the uh, inclusion of black people in, in, in what is Azapo's plan to ensure the inclusion of, of black people uh, in, the, in the farming sector? Um, and also, um, Comrade Malapane, you spoke about uh, food, uh, the, the seed situation. I don't think a lot of us uh, are praised as to what is happening with the seed situation, particularly between Monsanto and Bayer, which I now believe uh, Monsanto has become a subsidiary of Bayer. And Bayer currently has a number of lawsuits um, that are in place where they have been accused of providing a herbicide one um, that causes cancer. And secondly, they now are accused of poisoning the soil. So if you plant a Monsanto uh, seed in your land, it poisons the soil so that you are no longer able to plant anything else but Monsanto. So you are then locked into a, a Monsanto situation. So what is it that Africans can do uh, to uh, protect themselves in the future? Because the reality of the situation is that if we do not protect the seed, uh, food production will then be detected by Monsanto and the international community. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you, Comrade uh, Kekileto Kena. Uh, I, I, I obliged you because you're the deputy president of Azar. Uh, comrade uh, 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 Malapani, before you respond, here is a comment from the chat that says, while we got a very great presentation and input, both from you and Dr. Rapesu, he says, the reality on the ground is very difficult for black farmers. A black farm bordering a white farm cannot get funding and yet white farmers get millions in advance before they even start farming. That is just to latch on uh, onto what uh, Comrade Kekeleto uh, just indicated about farming, rather about, about uh, 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 funding. 
So if you can just take us through whatever she raised and also this particular matter. Dr. Repesu will join us also later uh, via video. Thank you. Uh, yes, Chairperson, you know, um, the issues in the agriculture sector are, are seemingly not different from in, in other sectors. By, by virtue of being black in most cases, you are looked at, you know, with a different eye. And I of saying you you are likely not to make it. So there are many things that you know the financial institutions tend to look at for for them to support, and some of which it include collateral in the form of land. And as Dr. Apesu was saying earlier on, okay. black farmers do not own land. And another issue, it's more around you know your cash flow, your historical record with regard to cash flow. And most of the farmers, they are not in five years into farming. They are only entrants into farming. So you are unlikely to prove that you have been longer and therefore you are able to. If anything, if you have extra sources of income, it's only then that you can be entertained. And I want to you know, match this with the DFI uh, question by the DPT president. Mm, yeah. uh, as to why is it that the DFI somehow tend to present a different image? Well, in fact, we know that the image that they're presenting is not a true reflection of, of, of reality. Land Bank, for insta instance, is in trouble as, as we speak. Uh, the CEO have resigned, you know, and, and they have their own challenges purely because they source their money from the free market like the other banks would do. Now, if a developing institution goes to the market to be able to support black farmers, then you can see that then we have a problem because uh, the shareholders are likely to always question, you know, how are we going to get our returns if you are so invested into this risky uh, uh, black farm? So we need to agitate more than anything, uh, uh, our government, uh, agitate and agitate because seemingly uh, history has proven that the more you speak is the more you listen to. Mm -hmm. And I think if you look closely at our farm organization, Azapo needs to really uh, uh, grow closer relationship with, with farm organizations. And not only uh, relationships, but assist in terms of capacity. Because farm organizations, black owned farm organizations are not so capacitated. When you go into policy discussions and you realize how strong your white counterparts are compared to yourself, and, and you, then you get to realize that this thing is likely just to, to go back. Because you go into a sessions, they go into streams, there are about five of them, you're only, the only one representing your farm organization, for instance meaning you can only contribute into one and when they come it's a summary of how things have went in other in other sessions so in a case where azapo i've seen that we've got a list of lawyers within azapo has forged into relations with farm organizations whenever there are these consultation meetings it's a matter of you know on the issue of water rights uh, comrade hokong what are you saying on this one how can we approach it comrade uh, uh, Jabu, how can we approach this one? And then you go there, you 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 know you're well vested, and you are able to articulate properly, you know your position on 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 this matter. Um, uh, I seem to have missed uh, other questions from the deputy president. If you can remind me, uh, chairperson. So uh, I, I've also not noted them, but uh, uh, I think I think the. The, the long and short of the issue that she was raising, among other things, is the issue of funding, like it indicated, but also uh, the issue of alliances, as you've pointed out, capacity as well. And also, what is Azapo doing? And uh, I hear you say Azapo this, but I think for the benefit of the viewers uh, globally, uh, you're actually saying your secretariat, your department is going to start forging relationship uh, with farmer organizations and provide the necessary expertise to be able to yeah. empower them. And I think we got the message. Yeah. So if, if maybe she feels there's an aspect that we did not answer, I think we will allow her to come back and clarify that. Uh, on another point, uh, oh, there she is. Uh, let us just check, maybe uh, Comrade Kekeleto. At the issue of Monsanto and the poisoning seed um, is, is quite critical. Okay. 
Okay, the issue of the seats. Thank you, comrade. Uh, comrade uh, Manapani. Uh, Chairperson, without you know name dropping, um, um, I, I just want to say that we need to trust in our own you know production. We have the ARC, Chairperson. The ARC is of our own. Uh, we should see how you know our white counterparts are using the ARC, the Agriculture Research Council. It's quite a huge institution. And if anything, we need to go to the ARC and find out what they've produced and how do we commercialize that? Or how do we make that available to the farmers? Because I can tell you, Chairperson, in most cases, when I engage um, uh, officials in government, you know, I even wonder actually who is government because they are as frustrated as me and you and they are looking for an agitator in a form of Azapo or in a form of, you know, Afasa Nafu or any other, you know, farm organization to say, we need this. Because these things, they have them, but they are shelved, you know, at the expense of, or, or, or others are flying at the expense of what they have produced. And if anything, the private sector somehow, you know, second them, and they're able to use the expertise from the ARC to, to drive the commercialization of the private products, the privately owned seeds, the privately owned you know, fertilizers, when we can tap into what the, what the, what the ARC is doing. Uh, uh, my apologies, Chairperson, I'm not so well-vested on the, on the issue with Monsanto, but I know that there are accusations around that. And I guess you know, they have to be ventilated in court and, and, and we, we have to take our positions from there. Okay, no, thank you, comrade. I think maybe the issue uh, of this company that creates this much problems for farmers in terms of seeds, speak to what uh, US panelists have raised and also comrade Nefolo Vodou had raised. Um, the issue that basically indicates what food sovereignty is all about. Food sovereignty is all about total involvement in the communities. But the question maybe that I can pose, uh, as I've been listening to Comrade Kekileto, Comrade Nefolovodwe, and you and Comrade Rapesu respond, and also checking what uh, the comments are from the chat, is the question that says, can food sovereignty, because I heard Comrade Nefolovodwe said, in the meantime, let us use food security and involvement is just but a component we must go for the bigger picture, right? Which is food sovereignty. Now the question is, can food sovereignty be, be, be supported or started or be sustained by using market forces, by using the capitalist economic system that we have? Can it land itself? Because we speak about a revolution and a change and uh, I haven't let us really get into this issue of the economy, right? The market forces. So, can the economy as it stands, the free market like you, we have used it, can it be supportive of uh, uh, sovereign uh, food sovereignty? So, so chairperson, uh, it's 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 always clear when the shareholders they get involved into investment, they are interested in the bottom line, and the bottom line has nothing to do with food sovereignty. It's more about how much money I can make. And unfortunately, in the free market system, as we want to see it succeed, or academics want to promote it to be the best way we can go about it. In the case of South Africa, it cannot work because it makes an assumption that we are all coming from you know, the same uh, plain level field. Whereas we know very well that others have been in the field for so long, they're well resourced, they have all the capacities to produce whatever that they can produce at the little cost possible due to economies of scale. Hence, my biggest emphasis is that we need our Agriculture Research Council, our Land Bank, <clears throat> our National Agriculture Marketing Council, the PPECB in the case of export and OBP to be well functioning if we are to get things right. Because if we are to rely on the free market system, unfortunately, uh, the day that they close the tab is the day you realize actually, you know, you fooled yourself. Okay. No, thank you, comrade. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening with comrade uh, Dr. 
Mama Bolo Rapesu. Uh, I hope he'll be able to join us. Uh, he'll indicate whether he's there. He is there, but uh, he's muted or he's, he's coming back. Uh, let's hope he does. Uh, just a few comments from, from the chat, uh, Comrade uh, Malapani and Comrade Rapesu. Uh, the comments from Facebook say, this discussion is of major importance, right? And uh, it's something that is very educative. Then uh, there is a challenge that is posed to, to your secretariat, Comrade uh, Malapani. It says, this discussion, and how, at, at what level we've pitched it, and with the kind of information that we share, this should form the basis of a position paper on farming of Azapo. So Azapo yeah. should produce a position paper on farm. So it's a, it's a challenge that we can take. Mm -hmm. Then I've got an input here by uh, the deputy. I don't know whether you had, you had touched on it earlier, but maybe let me just read it from the deputy uh, secretary for agriculture and land, and land affairs. Uh, one of the key strategic points for black farmers is a united front. We've talked about it. As long as black farmers are in silos, it becomes easy for us to be targeted and victimized. The white farmers are under a protective layer of land rangers. Very interesting co concept, land rangers. Maybe you might want to, 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 to zoom into it. Uh, they, are, they are under a protective layer of land rangers uh, that have placed themselves in the center stage of guarding over our land, which they believe is theirs. Notably, with the assistance of government for that matter, we need to find a point of unity and fight these battles together as a people with the same goals on land occupation and committed good sovereignty. There's the input of unity as you have also indicated. Uh, Comrade Malapan, one of your slides, uh, they're very interesting slides, uh, I noted somewhere here. You speak about as a solution, speak about land repossession. You see, there is a solution. Uh, not what we are seeing now through, and you also claim, you made a very bold claim, and I want you to, to, to work us through it. You claim that with the willing buyer, willing seller approach to land ownership uh, and restitution has failed. Can you talk us through those two, uh, General? Chairperson, uh, uh, since 1994, you know, the issue of land reform has really uh, taken a center stage and there have been so many uh, approaches to it from SLEG to LRED and now uh, through PLUS. Uh, to this day, government has uh, spent about 40 billion uh, towards land reform. And the target was that, you know, about 30% of land should be transferred to black ownership by 2014. We are in 2022 today and only less than 10% of land is in the, in the hands of black people. Chairperson, this is a clear indication that this method of trying to bring back the land, it's really not working. And it's costing us money, it's costing us money that should be invested into uh, black farmers who are already in existence. Uh, in my view, Chairperson, and uh, this is the position of, of Wazapo as well, as the, the, the PAC that, you know, there has to be a clear phrasing around this uh, in a sense that we, we are not expropriating, we are, we are repossessing our land that, that was dispossessed from us. So someone has taken something that belongs to us, Chairperson. Now we are saying we, we need that which belongs to us. And if, unfortunately the route that we've taken that of a willing buyer, willing seller, have seen you know farmers uh, 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 farmland prices you know going skyrocketing to a point where you know government has to separate with too much money for for the land that was taken uh, uh, for free or if anything at the cost of the lives of black people. So so chairperson in in if we, we can learn a lot from from, from water rights, you know, initially water rights were given to individuals, but now they are in the hands of, of the state. All you have to do is to apply to use those water rights. The same applies to the mining. Those who are extracting our mineral resources, Chairperson, they do not own the land. 
but they 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 are able to make use of the very same land that we is owned by the state to extract mineral rights. So one of the reasons why uh, that have been you know in the forefront when it comes to the issue of land repossession is the is the issue around you know uh, food security, and as well as that it may discourage investment into the agricultural sector. Chairperson, uh, with the example that I've just given you of the of the mining sector, there are so many people that want to invest in the mining sector. Yet it speaks nothing about owning the land in which you're going to, to, to mine. Yet there are so many investors that want to put in resources to get to extract those, uh, those mineral resources. In my view, and I guess this is the position of the organization as well, that if land is repossessed and held uh, in, 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 in state ownership on behalf of people, that could be the best way in which we can fast track the issue of, of land reform. And, and the idea that there will be uh, food security challenges. Uh, Chairperson, uh, black people have been farming before the arrival of white people and they've been doing well. Why are we being so apologetic about it? If this land, Chairperson, was, um, uh, if the native people of this land were white people and we, we had taken this land by force, I can tell you that they wouldn't think twice about how you know, uh, land has to be returned. If, if they were to put themselves in our shoes, they will know clearly that it has to be done. Uh, the how part, you know, uh, uh, it's a matter of a process, but it has to be done overnight. Unfortunately, Chairperson, the direction we are following as a country is the direction of privatizing everything. And at the rate that which we are going, we are likely to even privatize the electricity. We're likely to, to privatize even the production of seed. The ARC is going down, Chairperson. And if Azapo is not forging relations with farm organization, the food sovereignty we're talking about today will be something that you know uh, will only remain in, in the history books. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> uh, and Dr. Rapesu, Dr. Rapesu, are you are you with us? Yeah, I, I'm here. Oh, okay. Just that your video is off. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, if huh. you can switch it on, we will be happy. Uh, what is your take, uh, Dr. Rapesu, so far on the inputs? Uh, and as you prepare to come in. Uh, I would want the two of you to address this issue that is bugging me here. There is this thing, Comrade Malepani, of repossession of the land, and that it must be held in the custody of the state. Comrade Rapesu have said, as black farmers, one of the struggles that they have as farmers is ownership. They don't own the land. In other words, they need the title deed. So now, does repossessing the land and the state having custodianship over the land guarantee them uh, their title deeds over the land that they will have? For me, I think that is the question. And Dr. Rapesu, can we start with you on that? And then we'll come to uh, Comrade Malepa. You are on mute, Comrade uh, Dr. Rapesu. Uh, hello. Yes, hello, we can hear you. Can't you switch yeah. on your video? Oh. Okay, go ahead, Comrade Rapesu. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm interested in talking about uh, the Monsanto issue. Okay, uh, okay. Because, because I, I know a lot about these guys. Uh, we received training under Monsanto on how to use the chemicals uh, uh, and uh, the, 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 the genetically modified stuff, uh, uh, seeds that they, 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 are, they are in possession of. But I know, I know that there, there, there are uh, groups, there, there are groups that are fighting uh, the Monsanto way, the, the, those who believe in natural way, the natural way, yeah. So, the genetically modified seed have got all the labels of uh, doing the, that and this. And uh, yet the advantage on, on 
genetically modified uh, stuff is that they help mass production. Okay. And if you want to produce in massively, you, you rather consider that. Even the fertilizers, you need to consider that. Otherwise, I mean, you don't even have a crawl where you can use crawl manure to, to progress, I mean, to, to, to push your, your, fat, your soil fertile. But uh, you still have these guys in charge and, and, and they, they are, their plan works. The only thing I know is uh, when, whenever you spray using genetic, uh, the, the, the glyphosate, the, uh, the, 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 the poison, which, which is glyphosate anyway, uh, you, you must be careful that you spray, spray on the crop and not on, on the soil. And you, you confine your, your, your implements within the soil, the, I mean, the, 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 the planted uh, area and not just on the soil. Otherwise, it's not healthy for, 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 for the soil itself. We are destroying the soil. There is that acceptance. But the other things is mass production is, is what people of business are going after. And if you, you want to play, you can use the crawl menu, or you can go and buy uh, it anyway, but that's scientific, yeah? Uh, mm. it's, it's, science has brought a lot of things that we need to use. Some of them uh, are suspicious in me. Now, 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 now Rapis, who just there, when you speak about the poison and the deputy president of Azapo made the point to say that this company is being accused of once you use their product, then it means you are, you are, you are locked in for life because now then otherwise your soil gets poisoned. So if you say the poison must be sprayed on the crop itself, what if it rains or your irrigation system uh, washes that particular poison down onto the soil? When did it go to the point that was then made by the deputy president to then say, you will be effectively poisoning the soil, therefore you won't be able to grow any other products other than the one but, of those. Well, what would you say to that? Well, we, I mean, there, there are a lot of risks pertaining to a number of issues that even the, those who are skeptic about uh, uh, genetically modified things uh, are also running a great risk. See, they, sometimes when, when other people are doing the thing in a very, I mean, we, we had been serious conferences where, where the opposition led by an Indian woman uh, against uh, the use of uh, glyphosate in, 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 the, in the field of farming. Mm. Uh, but it, it has never made any impact. Okay. Uh, each one has got his own way, following his own way or her own way in, in the farming. Each group, I mean, there are believers in, in it works for them. Those who believe in uh, glyphosate or genetically modified seeds and other stuff, it works for them. But those who do the natural thing, also it works for them. And, but they, most of them are applying on a small quantity, on small land. The, one would say they, they are actually doing um, uh, farming on, uh, on, on, a, uh, on a very small scale. And it's not for really feeding on a broader scale and feeding the nation. And for that, uh, they need to improve their own things outside uh, using uh, genetically modified stuff and let's see what what they have we can't stay in the past when when the, the present is here and presented by scientific uh, uh, discoveries okay okay no thank you very much so you are saying there can be some benefit uh, depending on from which school of thought you come from uh, I've got another hand that is up and I'm going to allow Comrade Malepan I'll give you a chance to give your reaction. And then I've got a hand and then I'll go now to the comments uh, as I look at uh, the time that I have. 
We've got less than 15 minutes to go, but I'm sure we can cover quite a lot. Yes, Comrade Malepani, let me allow you to give your reaction if you want, and then I'll give over to Comrade Nontobe Koyawa from the UK, who's joining us from there. Chairperson Nontobe Koyawa, may go ahead. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Okay, sure. Uh, Comrade Nontobeko, Yawa, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, she is a deputy. Oh, thank secretary. you. Sure, sure, Comrade, go ahead. Thank you, Comrades. Uh, well, this has certainly been a very interesting um, conversation and has drawn up a lot of issues that we need to address as Azapo. I think um, what I've um, picked up from this particularly is that um, our whole energy has to look at transformation of our system in in Azania. Um, we've we've been um, we've adopted a capitalist system which has created dependency on on it and what um, Dr. Rapesu was just saying is exactly that system that's working very much against <laughs> um, because They've, they've enabled um, this genetically modified um, processes are very, very expensive. And they knew this, they knew that Africa could not afford it. So they would force them onto African nations so that, you know, they could um, wipe out our indigenous systems. And they, I mean, when I was studying um, environmental sciences, they were actually saying that the indigenous systems have more longevity about them than the, 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 the these um, gen genetically it's modified seeds, because the disadvantage of them, of, of GMSs, is that they actually create health issues on top of everything else. So you have costs you know, which are negative costs, which have been created by that. And they were actually saying that we need to go back to developing uh, indigenous systems. And I think that's the direction we need to be thinking in. And, and because in as much as they're saying the genetically, genetic systems are mass produced, etc., cetera, um, we can't afford it. We really can't. And I think for us in, in, our, in our own country, we look at what our needs are. We talk about um, sovereignty. We talk about self-reliance. What are we going to do to work towards that goal for us as a population? And um, I think Developing the, the databases of working amongst ourselves, thinking of ways in which we can resource our own programs are very critical. And obviously working towards the land pro repossession program uh, project, because um, once we get our people skilled and have the support base on the ground for them, the rest will follow. We can work towards you know, the long-term goal of, of taking and, and eradicating the system that we're working within. Um, I just I just want, I think that comes with a program from the Department of Land Affairs, which will eat away slowly. Once you get that moving, eventually you'll get to a point where you'll get your people. We won't, I mean, you talked about the extent of racism and um, within the institutions that exist right now we can't get in there and you know i've spoken to black farmers they're constantly you know being blocked we can't seem to break through them so we've got to work outside of them to bring them down ultimately mm -hmm. you know we're not strong enough so we need to develop ourselves to mm -hmm. a point that we're capable of destroying those institutions thank okay. you no, no thank you comrade uh, yawa uh, Comrade uh, Malepane and Comrade uh, Garapesu, uh, your reactions. Then I've got another hand, and uh, then I'll go to some of my comments. Over to you, comrades. Jefferson, um, I'm in total agreement with what uh, Comrade Yawa has just said. Now, we <clears throat> we really only have ourselves if only we can work together towards what we think can work for us. That's the only way we can get to, to succeed. Mm. 
I mean, the numbers are in our favor. We are the consumers of this product. But unfortunately, if there are no incentives for, for this indigenous knowledge systems, uh, if there are no incentives for farmers to go in that direction, they are unlikely to. Because with the GMOs, when you compare them to, to, to indigenous you know, ways, you are likely to, to yield much bigger harvest compared to you know, the, the non-GMO uh, uh, crops. But if there is a premium on a non-GMO crop, uh, definitely a farmer is likely to go in, in, in that direction. So there has to be a way through which we incentivize our farmers firstly to go in that direction. And then, you know, uh, you will see how quickly we can, we can achieve that. Okay, thank you, Comrade. Uh, Dr. Rapeso, any reactions? Uh, unmute, unmute yourself, Dr. Rapeso. Uh, Hello? Yes, you are unmuted now. Okay. Um, you know, we have more problems, but uh, how we tackle that is the amount of strength we have to tackle problems. And even before we, we, we do what we need to be doing, then we talk about certain problems that are peripheral. We, we, can, we can still work our way without attending to them. Uh, until such time we have our own thing that works for us, we will continue to use the very genetically modified, especially when you are not doing this for personal consumption, if it poisons you. Uh, if you are taking this to the market and feeding animals, why, why can't you use it to, uh, and, 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 and get your money for it? Because uh, uh, you, you don't do this for personal consumption. I don't know whether the market also is, is going to follow the same trend of selling to others and not for consumption. But if it's for consumption and it has happened in many ways that people are affected, I mean, no. The medical world should have long attended to that. It could not just go on and on and molesting the people. And it's just that there are people, I mean, there is war, business war, that okay. people are fighting. And, and the small groups are there to fight their battles. And while these guys are seated elsewhere and talking the, uh, their sumptuous language elsewhere, but uh, I would say, let's, let's look, let's sort out what is important now in terms okay. of, 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 of really removing what is so oppressive to us okay. in this okay. country. No, thank you very much. I had, I, had, I had another hand, but I see it has disappeared now. Uh, I've got, uh, I must apologize up front to my audience and obviously my, my, my panelists here. Uh, I just have got an, uh, an avalanche uh, of comments <laughs> uh, and, 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 and in the in the Q and A and in the in the chat. So uh, it's just a buzz. But uh, just to indicate that the people across the political line, political spectrum, are saying Israel to Africa. Thank you very much for this particular uh, 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 educative and informative uh, session. Uh, other people are making some of the comments. That have been repeated. Others are coming up, uh, Comrade Malapani, Tamaha, with some suggestions that they believe Azapo and your secretariat they should engage into in terms of taking this forward. And, uh, and that, uh, Dr. Uh, Rapes will be interested in this because he speaks about livestock uh, and poultry here. Uh, it says the limiting of land access to black farmers and their branding as what is called small scale and backyard farmers simply reduces these role players to mere escorts in the farming space. Where livestock farming is concerned, poultry farming is encouraged where blacks are concerned. Uh, whereas with whites, beef farming and the dairy farming is encouraged. 
So these are some of the things that we get and uh, that come from your deputy comrade uh, Malapani. And uh, there's a comrade here who speaks, but uh, this thing that have been repeated, I'm just trying to quickly run through them, but uh, they will be there in the recording so that we can then just see. Ntate uh, Rapesu, an example that has been given about, about, about livestock farming, a single cow requires three hectares of graze, right, to grow uh, the full potential. Small scale farmers are scrambling for just one hectare of land. Right, so they've got zero chances to grow good quality heads of cattle. You might maybe agree it resonates with you as a, as a farmer uh, that deals with livestock. Uh, I just thought I could bring it to me to you. She's pointing yeah. out some of the struggles that you have as farmers, uh, Dr. Napesu. Yeah, I, I think suffering at, at least makes people leave people with no choice, it leaves people with no choice because. They are just informed to concentrate on th this particular kind of thing, uh, small business, and, and you grow it as you go. We 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 need to to go on a very full scale farming. If if you want to to, to make farming wet, you are not working for eating. You are not okay. uh, after after you know uh, subsistence. You. You need to, to be part of this country and what is happening in this country. You need to rule this country as well. If, if all the subsistence people are left to do their own game of selling chickens and other stuff and eggs, and, and the white people continue with the land, we shall have not brought about any change in this country. No, 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 we hear you, Dr. Rapeso, and we agree, and uh, the Deputy President of Azoko agrees with you. Uh, she says, among other things, uh, you are right, we cannot ignore colonization, right? Particularly oh, yeah. settler colonialism, oh, yeah. but also yeah. she speaks about Comrade Malapan, she speaks about the colonization of the seeds, right? Then she says, seed, uh, seed security is linked to food security, right? So these are some of the, the very interesting issues that are coming yeah, up. Of course, and, and, of and, course. And, and there is a suggestion, the Dr. Rapes. There's a suggestion before you go, Dr. Rapesu, that there is a need for an agriculture in Daba. Over to you. Oh, Dr. yeah. As soon as soon as yesterday. There okay. is a need for, for that in Daba as soon as yesterday. What I'm trying to say is, you see, I, I think there's also propaganda on the part of uh, the outside people in farming. We need to get the facts right, and and so that we, when we debate, we debate fruitfully. But when when it comes in the form of just sweeping, uh, mm. we, we are likely not to be uh, taken serious by other people. Okay. Uh, mm. Closing comments from you, uh, Comrade uh, Malapane Tamaha. Uh, Chairperson, in in the in the closing of my presentation, I I've shared with you, you know, something that we we are working on, tapping into something we are in a, understand in a form of of stock fells, but this time around we're speaking about agriculture stock fell network. So here we are saying we are following parallel processes while we appeal with the government and following procedure in this system to say, hey, listen to us. But at the same time, there's something we're doing about it <clears throat> on our own. Because I can tell you, Chairperson, that the resources we have, it's only that they are in isolation. When I say resources, I'm not talking about land, I'm talking about human resource. It's only that it's in isolation. We, uh, Comrade Deputy is speaking about the seat. We have qualified people who have attempted to produce seed. We have qualified people who are producing breeding stock. Mm. We have qualified people in the feed mill spaces and along the value chain, those who are traders. But the, especially in the trading space, it's difficult because whose product are you trading? Yeah. You know, as soon as they hear that, I mean, the, your mm. accent, your Malapan, no, 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 uh, where's your manager, you know? So, so meaning you, you are likely to live out of that space because it's driven by the money, the throughput. So in this network, uh, Chairperson, and I appeal to anyone who's listening here, we are trying to empower each other and try to build 
parallel value chains that can benefit ourselves. You are in the poultry space, you want to buy day old chick, look at that uh, <coughs> Mark um, Fikwe, uh, where he's getting his day old chick from, from a black owned you know, hatchery. So these are some of the things that we are trying to advocate within the agri stock farm network. But it doesn't speak only about the inputs, but it speaks about the important aspect of owning the financial means of doing so, which is the bank. So, so, so anyone who is listening to this and they are saying in any case is a talk show, after this session, we're going back to our troubles. Here is a solution. It's up to you if you climb onto it while we agitated the government or you opt not to, Chairperson. Uh, and on that note, uh, I would like to thank you for, for the opportunity and thanks you know, the audience for, for listening and for engaging. It was really fr fruitful. I think we need to have more of this. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Comrade Malapan. And Tate Tamara, Uno Kuala Fela, and Tate Rapesu, Mo Mama Bening to the listeners. Comrade Rapesu. I'm grateful that I've been part of this. I, I call it an, a, an innovation of some kind. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful that we, there is, it has risen some curiosity on the part of those people who, who are making input for us this. I think uh, uh, this is just but the beginning of greater things to follow. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to my, to my yeah. panelists. Uh, uh, before you, you close, I see there's a proposal here for an agri endeavor. So, so there are conversation going now, you know, farmers are disgruntled and they are looking at matching to, you know, their respective provincial departments of agriculture. And there's a proposal indeed that echoes what the, uh, uh, the viewer here is saying about an agriculture endeavor. So indeed, there will be an, an agriculture in the our chairperson. Okay. No, thank, thank you, you very much. Which which will be led, which will be led by Azam. I think that's what we are saying. And uh, there's been a request. <laughs> that, 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 there's been a request by by the viewers globally that uh, if we could share the slides of Comrade uh, uh, Ma, Malapani, uh, we say please drop your details uh, on the Facebook of Azapo. Uh, and or we'll be able to, or, or we will drop on the Facebook of Azapo, the email address of Azapo where you can send your requests to, and then we can maybe deal on those on our, on our needs uh, basis by one by one. But go to the Azapo website, go to the Azapo uh, Facebook page, and then uh, we can communicate there and give you the Azapo uh, email address, and then you write to us there. Uh, it has been such a wonderful uh, a Sunday afternoon. Uh, I have been honored uh, to, 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 to basically be facilitating this particular session, uh, especially so honored because it's on the eve of the Sharpville and Langa massacre, not the bastardized version called Human, Human Rights Day, but uh, the, 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 the Sharpville and massacre, uh, 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 Sharpville and, 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 and Langa massacre. So uh, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure to my, to my panelists and uh, to all the viewers. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And we will close off uh, with our, what we, we always try to do uh, when we close our sessions. Thank you.
Uh, till next Sunday. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. Cheerio. Bye. Salute.